I love the album Lighthouse. It's got that like Johnny uh that you know uh, Johnny Thunder's like acoustic vibe that yeah. a lot of your stuff has that I like. Actually, I think you've maybe covered some Johnny Thunders before. I have. Um, so I definitely want to talk to you about Lighthouse, the album. But before we get into Lighthouse conversation, I want to ask you about the This Is The Song EP, because I initially put in the request to interview around that time. Oh, it was. Yeah, I've been waiting for this one. Uh, it was Mental uh, Health Awareness Month, and yeah. that was coinciding with that EP. So I would love to ask you about what spurred that project and how that's also tied into Light Lighthouse. I mean, right. So it's so tied in because... Uh... First, first question you asked, what, what's spurred or spurned on that, that, uh, uh that spurred on it is, spurred, right? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Um, I mean, this, the song was literally wrote, written during a panic attack. So a, a active panic attack was happening and, and I discovered something in writing that song. I was writing myself, I was playing my guitar, like just holding on to it, you know, to get me through this panic attack. I was, um, I've had them since I was 16. I don't get them a ton anymore. I've, I've like sought and received help. I have other things, you know, that come as a side, a super killer side, you know, thing of panic attacks. There's other like depression, like what the, where'd this come from? I found out depression has nothing to do with what's going on in your life. Mm. It's not a choice, yeah. you know, it's a, uh, it's definitely a, uh, malaise that you that just comes on and mine is chemical imbalance crap you know it's just what it is mm -hmm. it's my thing tied to addiction so, too i imagine or an addictive personality as well well i think you know i know i self-medicated myself through i got my first panic attack at 16 hey when did i start drinking hey when did i start doing drugs and uh you know self-medicated myself into a pretty dark place uh wasn't my intention was not of my intention at all, but that's mm -hmm. that happened. But this is the song I, I started that by. I got that ping of a panic attack. I was up in bed with my wife. I don't like to tell her all the time when I'm having panic attacks. It's just oh. she loves so she gets worried. So I will often just get up and go, I'm gonna go down and get some water. Mm -hmm. And I'll go and deal and tear off my clothes and pour water on myself, whatever I got to do. But this time I went and got on my acoustic guitar and I was, it was during um, the, the COVID time. So uh, I uh, grabbed on the guitar and I wrote this, this chord, I started strumming chords and this, this song is going to save my life. Cause you really feel like you can't breathe and you can't. And I got, it was like one of those few songs that I'll write the whole thing, the lyrics and everything in that sitting. It doesn't have the lyrics. I'll write melodies and chord structures and stuff, but I'll work on my lyrics. I'll carve words for a while. But this one just kind of came out. And uh, so I recorded it. It was during the time that, um, you know, all of us were, I don't know what the real name of it, lockdown. I wasn't locked down. I was, you know, but it was a time when there was a pandemic was, was the worldwide pandemic. And it was pretty pan. You know, it was everywhere. And, and uh, so I had my studio. I just got it a couple of months before the, that all started. Wow. That's and so I just, the, the timing was amazing. Mm -hmm. And my wife is safe. My girls were safe. My young women, they're in their twenties, you know, and they were with us and like, okay, we got this. We got our dog and, you know, we can afford, we'll go stand in line at the grocery store. We'll do all the stuff that we got to do, you know, mm -hmm. our backpacks and, um, whatever you know we all had to do it. and uh i just start i had like um maybe i had like five songs left over i don't know if that's the right term from the tenderness five to eight and then i probably had another seven or eight ideas like little pieces and so i got my studio i started recording that i was supposed to go do a guns and roses tour we went and started rehearsing and we did the first show in mexico city and then the world just shut down i remember so that. i yeah you remember that I remember like just every day there was a news item hitting my inbox about tour canceled, show postponed. I remember that specifically. Yeah, we played like the last show on earth is what it yeah, felt like. Yeah. We were, you know, it was down in Mexico and it hadn't hit there yet. So mm -hmm. Mexico's like, well, I don't know. And they took the temperature of like the first 
10,000 people who came in. And they said, you know, like, okay, 30 people or three people or something really low. They're like, have a fever. That's that's normal. That's You're going to have that many sick people coming. So it wasn't, co- you know, we played the show. It wasn't, a, thank God, it wasn't like a, one of those super spreader events or anything. Because COVID wasn't there yet. Yeah. Um, uh, so we went home and, and I just dove into, um, I dove into my studio and dove into songwriting and, and you're a writer, but, you know, creating uh, words out of thin air and putting this, that, you know, you're, you're pulling something out and you're putting it out there. Right. And it comes from God knows where the ether and, um, and, and it, it's, and it oftentimes begets, more creative writing you know the more you do it the more so it was happening with songwriting me too i was just i had these songs record kept recording kept coming going home writing more songs it's coming back the next day with it was just martin and i and it was just like this there's nobody around you know uh and it was just this wonderful beautiful uh i've never had that much that time and space and my own creative place and so this is the song long story i gave you part of lighthouse too Mm -hmm. uh was one of those songs i recorded and i recorded nearly 60 songs um putting out an ep in may i just thought well this is a good we got to start getting music out because i have so many songs and by the time i'm done with this guns tour i'm going to have another 30 songs that's going to be 90 songs you know and by the time we're done recording the 90 songs, there's going to be another 30, you know. So how do we get this stuff out? So the EP, I think those songs are really good. <laughs> like the EP, it's just like this really special little, I'm like, oh, maybe we should have waited, you know, and put these on something else. But they're out, and I love that little EP. Um, and, uh, you know, going into Lighthouse, it was mm-hmm. kind, of, kind of had to be, when you have that many songs, like I will go, this will be the first song on the first record from the studio. And that is Lighthouse. Okay, that's going to be the first song. That's a great first song. It's a, at the root of it. It's a just a straight up love song to my wife. Yeah, I wanted straight to actually up. ask you about that since we were talking about Susan. I, you know, I got all the lyrics to, to the album. So I, you know, that yeah. one wasn't too hard to interpret. I have other specific songs I want to ask about, but she's basically been your lighthouse. How long have you been married at this point? 20? Well, we we got 25 years married next yeah. year. We've been together 27 years. Congratulations. I'm so, sure you get asked you. this all the time, but what's the yeah. secret? Not only in general is it hard for a marriage to last so long, but certainly in your line of work, it's kind of an anomaly. That's yeah, my yeah. to the cliche, but it is. I know. And yet, I mean, you know, uh, it's funny. We go through like our kids went through school and like you yeah, have school parents and stuff. And, and we were, you know, like a bankers or whatever the heck they are, you know, like, and they're doing stuff. Like, we would never do that. That's, that's not going to last. That thing is not, we're just, you know, we're, we're super cool to each other. We um, give each other room. We really dig each other in like every specific way you could imagine. And, you know, she takes my breath away still when she walks in the room, her perfume, that smell, you know, I'm like, Oh, uh, so, I'm fortunate. I know that, you know, and we talk about d- during COVID, a lot of these songs are about her from this, this set of 60, because during COVID, I just fell in love with her, uh, not to sound corny or whatever, but more and more because we would hear about other 20 year marriages, like going out the door. And we're like, yeah, what the f- is that about? Like, that we're good, thing. right? Mm-hmm. It was a thing, wasn't it? Yeah. A lot and, of marriages, um, famous and otherwise did fall apart during lockdown for sure. And I guess we're just together a lot, you know, and I tour a lot. Absence definitely makes a heart, heart grow fonder, but we can be together as much time as we're apart. And, and, and it's, we cherish the time together. You know, I do. I'll speak for myself. She might just be faking it. I don't know. No. <laughs> After 26 um, years, I think you could probably trust that. It's yeah. yeah I think, she, I think we're good. Yeah. 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 Um, so lighthouse, you know, the song, was this simple little three chord thing. I come up with this, um, these melodies and oftentimes these words, won't you be my lighthouse? I knew immediately that'd be about Susan, you know? Um, 
give me light and bring me home. And she just, you know, but it's also, I like to write, I, I read who I deem to be really great authors uh, and people that know how to put words together. And sometimes the economy of words they use, three words will mean 50 in somebody else's book. Those three words that cut you, just cut you. And like, oh. So I try to aspire to that in lyric writing a little bit. And yeah. as much as I can, I mean, I'm never going to be Cormac McCarthy, you know, but, but I can. Your, your lyrics are quite literary. I would use that word. All right. Fabulous. Well, good. Okay. Um, but in, and I also want to, you know, like, I don't want to, the straight up love song is, is great. And, but there, if there's another meaning, you know, I, I meant it, you know, that, that beacon of hope and that beacon of goodness that we all strive for. And that shine part at the end is just like, okay, come on, let's go humanity. And I also, you know, uh, I have God judging humanity, not, you know, kind of squarely on and uh, in a uh, God on 10th street, you know, mm -hmm. whatever God is, you know, the you God religious? just, a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, in the sense of Jesus Christ, your savior or whatever. Mm. Um, but I, I really, I have a sense of, I think through punk rock and martial arts, I really have a, a, a cool spirituality and an openness. And I read a lot. I mean, you know, I went to Jesuit school in my 30s. I went to business school. So I studied. Oh, well, I knew you went to I, business school. You're like this financial genius of some kind. Well, but the business school was a Jesuit Jesuit school. Seattle oh, wow. U. Okay. So, you know, in that, you got to take two years of and I already, you know, I, I was a guy who read. Even when I was getting fucked up, I was reading. And I, you know, I grew up in a Catholic family. My mom went south of the Catholic Church after Vatican II. I would, you know, history's great. I know why this happened and that happened in our family. And so, but, you know, martial arts and, the, and the, like maybe the maker, if you want to call it that. If, and if that is not a, I just swam in the ocean, you know, and I got in touch what the maker? I'm not a hippie. I'm not, a, but you know, it's like ocean's cold. It's, but I wanted to just get a piece, grab a piece of Earth, you know, and that piece was the ocean today, um, and I love that. And I, I think there is a general goodness that we, we all can identify with, and most of us want that um, at all times, you know, and. Um, I could just keep talking, but you no, know, I like love it. I love it. Do you believe in fate? Because you know, we were talking about your marriage and you know how yeah how, how great it is. Do you believe in in fate, destiny? It, it, when it comes meeting to my life? sensei was not anything, good gun, luck. Guns and yeah. roses, anything that you know, a lot of a lot of things have gone awry in your life, but a lot of things have gone quite right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you put yourself in a situation to become a fuck up, and and you explore that and you you do it. You're going to have good luck in that. And that's fate taking you down that way for whatever reason. However, also, Susan and I meeting um, was this period where I'd taken two years to just being sober. And I didn't know if I could date a woman again. I didn't, you know, I don't know how to like, like I got no game or whatever that <laughs> you have to have at 32 years old. And I'm sober and reading books. Like what? <laughs> Woman's gonna like some book nerd, you know. Uh, but I met her through a blind date, and we I talked, I could tell we talked on the phone first, and it was like this. I mean, her voice makes me feel uh, amazing, you know, and uh, reminded me of sort of like one of my sisters, maybe, or but not in a weird way, just yeah. like comfort, home. <clears throat> and then we met, uh, she picked me up at the airport, and we went to dinner and, and it was uh, it was on. I mean, it was just on. So that happened and that's fate. That is fate. That's uh, he was like, oh, it's good luck, dude. But she had put herself in a position to be open to a relationship like ours became almost immediately. And I was open to it. I was I'd done the work. I got myself sober. I didn't try to get a like a girlfriend or something right after I got sober because I didn't know yeah. who I was. So I had to do some finding out who the f I was and how I treat others. And I didn't want to bring somebody else into that until I figured it out. So 
there you go. That's you go. that's fate with some some work behind it. Who set right? you up on the blind date? I assume you have thanked that person many times over by now. Yes, seven, seven um, flowers every year. Yeah, he uh, um, Stain. He he had a, a punk rock band in Toledo called Stain back okay. in like the eighties, and he wrote for Thrasher. Oh wow! I knew okay. him through Thrasher magazine, and she grew up with him, and and uh, so he knew me, and he knew her. She had just moved to LA, and he's like, "I know you haven't dated for a couple of years, but this, she's my fan. She's great. She's amazing. She's a model. Don't let that scare you away. You know." Like, uh, I'm like, I don't know that scared me away or nothing. <laughs> I don't even know, you know? And, uh, but, uh, she's, she's gorgeous, um, physically mm -hmm. gorgeous, mentally gorgeous, gorgeous, even say spiritually, like what she, how she identifies with how we all do this as humanity. And, and that's what, that's spirituality in me, how you identify with, with, how we all kind of get along, you know, given your reputation or history or whatever, I imagine did Susan have any trepidation or were other people telling her like this stuff guys, bad news. Don't get you know, guns or roses. They're, they're bad boys. Anything like that. Nice yeah, boys don't yeah, play yeah. rock and roll. <laughs> and, and yes. And, um, for sure. Uh, she had, she had a bad boyfriend. She had a really bad one before me so it was more about that it was more like okay that's not me right i, I would find out like stuff I'm like whoa um just want to let you know that's not me you know so it became more about that but yeah so she had some friends who said no 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 and she we talked on the phone and i'm yeah. like you know i've been sober for a couple we were talking just about who we are and I think she's kind of like, oh no, he's not that guy. And and um and I just I don't know what that guy is, you know, what you see in the videos of Guns N' Roses. And and sure there was some pretty vagabond, reckless times, but there, I wasn't, you know, like a dirtbag to women ever, you know, like I have three sisters and a mom, you know, like a, that's not part of my deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't hang around with those people, you know, but they, like I went up the Me Too stuff started to have like, you know, those people who did that, who hangs out with them, you know, like somebody would have, even like when I was a kid in elementary school, you ever like that one guy who's like took it one too far, like, and it's like, you're out, you know, uh, I got off track there. Oh. And f fate also, you know, with Guns and Roses and, mm -hmm. oh, you guys are so lucky, you know, like, no, no, we, we all moved from different places of the country. We, we, we met each other, the, did all the, the work to find that right band. It didn't work in a couple different uh, uh, juxtapositions of that band. And it worked finally when we got Slash and Steve and there was that moment, you know, and then the songwriting work we put in, you know, it's like, it didn't just happen. And, and we've toured and toured and toured. And, and we happened to have hit on a like subject matter and approach of rock and roll, which you, you know wasn't that popular in 1987. What we were doing, it wasn't even a thing. Like these guys are a little punk rock or a little, yeah. little hard, and there's yeah. a lot of F bombs. And I always saw Guns N' Roses sort of kind of bridging the world between. I guess what was called hair metal then, you know, the poisons and stuff and the more underground thing that was happening in LA time, which was, you know, Jane's addiction, fishbone, Thelonious monster, you know, yeah. these, those kind of bands that I don't know if they get like, there were two things happening in LA at the same time. Absolutely. Everybody, everybody like met in the middle with Guns N' Roses because it kind of had it's, it's foot in both worlds. If that makes sense. Yeah. We would get a very mixed uh, audience. You would see like, you know, uh, Chris, get, you know, like uh, old punker guys, you know, to, like old, like my age, <laughs> like 20 year old punker guys, guys who had started when they were 13 and now were, you know, died in the wall, long teeth punker guys. Mm -hmm. And you see them come to our shows, uh, you know, John Doe's and like, whoa. And, yeah, and, and then the girls from the valley, you know, who would go 
Okay. And then, but it's great to have like the whole yeah. mixture and some hard like metal guys and punker guys. And, um, and I had no, you know, it was, it was really cool. Like, I guess we hit that. And then a few late, a few years later, we hit that sort of broad spectrum in, in America and in Europe and all over the world, you know? So, uh, that, that was cool. And, um, but you know, um, fate, I do believe fate drew us together. And we yeah. put in the work to, to make, you gotta, you gotta put in some work for fate to, 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 to in my experience, to happen. Absolutely. So while I still yeah. have a little more time with you, I want to make sure I hit on some other songs from the lighthouse. Right. Album. Sorry. Yeah. 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 No, no. I, I could talk to you all day. Uh, Fallen Ones is one, you know, I looked at all the lyrics and the lyrics to that out, that song, I, I assume they're autobi, they seem pretty autobiographical, other, other, unless it's sung from the point of view of the character, but it felt like it was. You know, obviously, it's about sobriety, or, or am I interpret? Why don't you tell me what that song is about? Well, that, well I mean, <laughs> it that one is really left. Um, sure, it's about. I saw a documentary on this uh, New Orleans, like you know, one of those pain centers. You know, they have those pain mm -hmm. centers, and all the junkies are out front, and like a, the doctor shooting up too, and you know, he got away, and like uh, that kind of imagery to me is is um w will work in a lyric but i also like uh the the, the veteran guy I, I did some climbing with my friend tim has his foundation with these guys who came back missing a leg or mm -hmm. more and missing stuff and we would start climbing mountains with these guys and my friend tim he did it i would just go because i like the mountain climb i would just go to help train these guys and camp and do all the stuff and Got, got to know him, and so I have those guys in there. I've got, you know, the veteran guys, and just kind of anyone who's been passed over or or, or um, kind of pushed down, and the sort of fallen ones, you know? And it's kind of a celebration song, like, uh, of overcoming, hopefully. And then another one I wanted to make sure I asked about is I Just Don't Know, which that one definitely seems autobiographical. It's stuff about yeah. childhood secrets things that happened to you when you were age two. I don't have the lyrics right in front of me, but there yeah, were things that it's okay. Out. Uh, yeah. But like my sister, stuff about your sister. Yeah. Like, what's tell me about that. Song. So, okay. So I knew lighthouse would be the first song on the first record. You know, I already know it's the first song on the next record. So, um, so what's going to be the last song on this record. And, and I, I was, I had this chord structure and a melody for, for just don't know didn't have a lyric i didn't have nothing was hitting and i was walking our dog at night and the stars were out and there was nobody out of course because it was during that time and that the lake is on the left side and i was looking up and i was like oh, i just don't know and uh and the, the ethers ever glow you know because the stars were there's something shot and i looked at those the, the water, I'm like, in the ocean's undertow, and I hit on this thing, and what does that f mean? It means something. It just came to me. So I had to pick up my dog. I didn't have my phone, and, and like, carry her home. She's, like, bombing. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm not done walking. Uh, and I get home, and I write the lyrics down, and it, and it took me into um, – I heard the yelling in the living room. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. That's, that's, like, that's heavy, and that's really autobiographical. But it works in the song. And it's a song of like wondering what's next, not in a morbid way, just like, huh, what's out there? And what's what's happened? What's influenced me? And I get a little braggadocio, you know, which I never do in the second verse with like, I left high school. They didn't know. I knew, you know, y'all. Mm -hmm. And um, and then getting Jerry to come in and, and be a part. He heard the song. He's like, man, can I? I'd love to be a part of that song. And he put that beautiful solo and then sang with me at the end. It's really, we did this really cool video that'll be out oh, cool. uh, a couple weeks, I guess, for that song. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a special song to me for sure.